Hello, Malty. Anyway. Hello, Malty. Mad mentalist musical musicians. Thank you, Tony M, for that malt mention. This is Ralphie Review 938 Extras, and I have just reviewed an independent bottling at high strength of Douglas Lang Talisker 12 year old. And I encountered a problem, but the problem started to fade away because I knew how to deal with it, and the problem was in the flavour. It, it hit a flat zone, and whiskies can do that. Whiskies can do many, many things. Uh, so I gave it a perfectly respectable 85 out of 100 as a malt mark. I, I'm enjoying that whisky. I will continue to enjoy it. I have an official bottling of Talisker open, 10 year old um, and 18 year old, and therefore I'm going to blend them together and I'm going to have a lot of fun mixing and picking, mixing and picking uh, permutations and variations on the theme of Talisker. I do not recommend the non-age statement bottlings of Talisker. I recommend the age stated bottlings. Now apparently, recently, the 10 year old has significantly improved on the quality, disappointing quality, that it was a couple of years ago. So fingers crossed that Diageo are going to do more because all distillers need to do more these days to uphold the quality of casks being used for the maturation of whisky because if the casks do not have the quality in them you will not get the quality in the whisky and then they're going to have to spend even more and more and more on disingenuous increasingly failed marketing because people are just getting sick of the same old same old same old message coming from marketing which to be honest when you've been around whiskey for a period of time and you're spending your own money on it it becomes increasingly fake disingenuous insincere and frankly it's morphing into commercial gaslighting now, i'm going to talk about this in another in another extras so let's get back to the this bottling here what's special about it is it's a single cask from an independent bottler based in Scotland which is probably only available in the UK or if you happen to have friends in the UK they can buy it for you and post it out to you depending if you're allowed to even receive alcohol through the post and it's even affordable my goodness that that industry is so rigged very rigged but you know that when we start out in whisky, we buy a bottle of Glenfiddich or Glenmorangie. They're chill filtered. They may be caramel colourant added. They may have some burnt sugar in them to give them a darker colour to make them look more appealing. And that's fine because when you start out, when we all start out with whisky, we're not making big comparisons. We're not aware of it and we're not spending that much money. We're maybe picking up in the sales or in a discount or we happen to be in a supermarket or we're online or just happen to go into a grocer's shop, a licensed grocer's or a specialist whiskey bottle shop and there it is, it's sitting there. We bought a scotch whiskey and you think to yourself, right, I'll buy that, I'm going to buy that because, you know, I've, apparently whiskey's quite fashionable these days and people are raving about it on the internet and talking all about how complex it is. So, Let's get a bottle and try it out. And that's exactly what people do. So they pour a wee dram themselves, or they have a meal, they've got a few friends around, say, by the way, let's open that bottle of whiskey now and have a taste. Into the tumbler it goes, there's a few wee sips. Mm, oh, oof, it's a bit hot, isn't it? It's a bit, well, I find it quite smooth. Well, I find it quite rough. Well, can you, can you taste the peat? No, what, what does peat taste like? <laughs> you need to taste peat to know what peat tastes like. That distinctive tangy phenolic odour and the flavour and therefore it's the beginning of a journey and only about one in a hundred whiskey buyers will go beyond being a passive well-intentioned consumer 
and start to explore further and deeper and yes, of course, spend more money. Not just a bit more money, mom mates. A lot more money. I spend a lot of money in whiskey. Each year I spend a small fortune in whiskey. But there's a very good reason for that. I buy everything that I review so that I get the customer's experience and not the loaded upmarket experience that happens to be when distillers hand out free bottles to journalists and influencers in, ch in exchange for good publicity. It's very, very cheap marketing. Super cheap. And then for those with maybe a slightly bigger channel, but you don't need that many views, you get the hospitality. You go along and then suddenly you're presented with maybe a cask strength whiskey, a limited edition, and you're getting through the burn of the alcohol and you need to quickly gain the experience of using water to cut down that alcohol to access the flavours. Or if you're just an enthusiast, you haven't started your internet channel, but you maybe you've joined a whiskey club or you're, or you're checking out the forums and all of a sudden you have this avalanche of valuable information and it's very difficult to absorb it all in a short space of time. Got to take one step. In fact, my recommendation, mom mates, is see what, however fast your whiskey journey is proceeding, slow it down a bit. Don't rush it because ultimately there is no destination. There is no destination. It's the journey that matters. And the journey is when we, we evolve over time, with patience, practice and tasting perseverance, we start to move to higher strength whiskies, like official bottlings, without chill filtration, colour added like Springbank and Kilkern and Arnon and Glencadam, Noch, Arnamarkin and Chorovake. These very exciting distilleries, some of which are only just arriving in the scene and showing great promise. You will not know about them until you're online learning your trade, the malt trade, the malt tasters trade. Whiskey's not for guzzling. People who are opening a bottle of whiskey and having a whole bottle with a mate in a night, going nowhere. Just hurting the liver. So it's the culture. You go from the chugging culture, the quaffing culture, the look, put ice in it, put Coca-Cola in it, it'll make it easy to gulp and then I can get some more. We, we morph away from that culture towards the sipping culture, which needs time, a little more quiet, a little more careful planning, but it's worth the investment moments for the complexity and these unforgettable flavours. And by the way, you'll get to the stage you cannot turn back. You will have a night where you're just quaffing something back with ice in it and Coca-Cola and ginger beer, beer and all the rest of it. And do you know what? You won't really enjoy it because it's not the same. It's far more superficial, far more shallow. It's what most bars thrive on. They need it. The volume of consumption to make their profits. Even better if they're a style bar, they can treble, treble the price while offering basically the same product with a little garnish, minimal garnish. That's where the real money gets made. The real fast bucks. And they are fast. So here we have an independent bottling. And this, before I go any further, I want to explain it to you. Before I explain how you access it, I'll use this as an illustrative example. 12-year-old Tasker. There we go. Bottle of 48.4%, I think, roughly. Unshell filtered, natural cask colour. So that's a reasonable amount of colour. It's an active cask, because inactive casks don't pick up that colour over 12 years. It's a settled cask, bigger cask. Only 355 bottles. But don't worry if you've missed one, because they'll bottle another one soon. They're always bottling. And they always will be. So, as regards rare and exclusive, you will find very soon that you have a million and one rare and exclusive casks coming out constantly. Every rare and exclusive will be followed by another. 
And if you think that you've got a rare and exclusive whisky because it's 50 years old, I tell you, within the decade, 50 year old whiskies are going to be 10 a penny. You're going to be spoiled for choice. Because the distillers are responding to the market. And the older they can make their whisky, the more they can absolutely rocket ship their profits in a moonshot. And they know it. They've never had it so good, malt mates. Never in the history of whisky. Never have so many people been spending so much money. Why? Because of global prosperity and wealth, driven by technology, driven by the internet, driven by knowledge, and driven by the consolidation of nation states. It's what it is. It's to understand things. It explains a whiskey. There's something I want to point out. This whiskey was bottled at 48 point, what was it again? Where's my steampunker? 48.4% which you may regard as high strength and you may regard as cask strength but let me tell you this is not necessarily the case it is not unusual in fact it is relatively common for independent bottlers and official bottlers to take a high strength whiskey at say for example 58% what, after 12 years, of whiskey would be 58%? Yes. Yeah, it can. Particularly in larger casks, where there's less evaporation due to the volume to surface ratio. That's what you get. You know that bit. What happens is, they taste the whiskey and they think, oh, oh my goodness, it's chock full of flavour. I tell you what, if we dilute it slightly, not a lot, we're not taking it down to 50%, not taking it down to 46%, not taking it down to 43% or 40%, because we're not going to do that. It's not our market. But we can take this 58% whiskey down to 54%. In fact, let's take it down to 52%. And how many more bottles will we get out the run, out the batch, out the cask? Couple of dozen. And there's more. In the UK, they'll be paying lower rates of duty, customs and excise tax. The lower the volume of alcohol in the bottle, the less tax you pay. The less tax you pay, and it's a whacking great slice. It's 20%. And there's 20% value added tax. It's almost 40% off the total that customers paying. That's a huge amount of money. For people, taken by people who contribute zero, nothing, nothing. They only do it because they can, because it's accepted. But it's real life, we go on with it. That's the rules, deal with it. Just deal with it. So one way they deal with it is they reduce down a little bit, because they've got a great high strength whiskey, it still looks like a cask strength whiskey. It is still cask strength, but not what it was previously. And uh, they get more bottles, they pay less duty, and they make more profit. And with the cost of buying casks nowadays, with the cost of grain and the cost of energy, with the way the cask prices have skyrocketed, they need that extra money for the business. They need to keep, excuse the pun, a whiskey business needs to remain solvent. <laughs> I couldn't resist it. What else can I tell you about these bottlings? The higher the strength, particularly with single cask, do not expect the familiarity that you get from official bottlings bottled at 40% or 43% gel filtered and caramel added. Do not expect it you're getting a different experience and it will take harder, it will take longer and it will be a more effort and it will be a little bit harder, yes it will, to access it. You need time. The first glass, no. The second glass, probably not. Third glass, you're getting there. Fourth glass, now. Now you're starting to understand the whiskey. And you'll have to do it not in one night, you'll have to do it over three or four nights. In this whiskey there's a flat spot 
there's a green sour flat spot in the development right through to the finish. And you need, you need to experience it first to recognise it. Then you need to experience the subsequent recovery due to the oxidisation and the unravelling of flavours out the liquor over a space of an hour. And then you say, wow, hasn't that changed? Whiskey's changed in the glass. They change with each pour out the bottle. The ones that change the least, the ones that change where it's barely noticeable, are the ones that are bottled at 40 to 43% chill filtered and with colourant added. These are the sanitised whiskies. These are the convenience whiskies. These are the pot noodle whiskies, mock mates. They're the pot noodles. Pour and go. Whereas integrity whiskies, whether official bottlings or un unofficial independent bottlings, they need work. They need, they need you to apply the skills of the trade, the whisky trade, the customer trade, the drinker's trade, to, to actually have the patience and perseverance to see how the bottle morphs. And I'm going to conclude this video, quite an important video, I'm going to conclude by saying I had a bottle of Mortlach, which was pure Parma Violets, totally Bowmore-ish. And all I did was I decanted it in and out a jug a few times and put the bottle on the shelf for about three months. When I came back to it, it was fabulous. It was a good whisky to start with. It was just dominated by a certain note of flavour. Same with this. This is the skills. I'll tell you more of the skills in due course. That's quite enough for the moment. I'm Ralphie. This has been an extras. I know how much you love the extras. And if you enjoyed this, click the likey. Leave your comments. I do look at the comments and leave a wee heart. Um, most of the time, when I'm not busy chasing my tail. And, and of course, please subscribe. Um, to be updated um, if I haven't if I'm not continuing to be shadow banned for mentioning alcohol which is wicked and wrong and sinful and bad and you know it's not right alcohol really mock mates pleasure as always and again my final conclusion is a big thank you to my Patreon pals who follow me in Patreon Ralphie um, the quality of the commentary and the content is just fantastic in the feedback and I really, really enjoy having such a civil, wonderful group of folk um, as my Patreon pals. That's why you get extra content. Bye-bye.